good and glorious morning to you, children of God. Uh, welcome to today's seed time and harvest broadcast. Such a privilege and honor and a high favor to have this opportunity to come and speak to you and speak life over you today. Today, we're going to be starting a pretty much a series of studies about divine shifting. And we're going to be looking at a portion of scripture from the book of Mark, chapter 11, verse 23. And we're going to be examining some of the texts where we see shifting taking place. I want you to say along with me as we will use as a thought or a topic for this week's message, shift happens. Shift happens. And we're going to see an example of that in the text of scripture that we're going to look at today. And we're going to be asking God to help us to fully grasp and understand what the Lord is saying and what it means and how it applies to our life today. So follow along with me if you like. Look at the book of Mark chapter 11 verse 23 and we'll see one example of what we're talking about today, which is a divine shift. And so, if you read Mark chapter 11, verse 23, it says, Truly I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, Go, throw yourself into the sea, and does not doubt in their heart, but believes that what they say will happen, it will be done for them. And that is the New International Version. So let's read that again. Truly I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea, in other words, shift or move and does not doubt in their heart, but believes what they say, it will happen and be done for them. Let us pray, children of God. Father, we thank you now in the name of Jesus. We thank you for his power. We thank you for his dominion. We thank you for his sovereignty. We thank you for the divine power to move, to shift, to rearrange things in our life, to, to speak to mountains and obstacles that are in our way, that they be removed now, Jesus. Give each listener faith to receive their, their healing, their breakthrough, salvation, deliverance, and we speak to every obstacle in their life, every obstacle around their lives, every obstacle past, present, and future, that it will be removed because of the divine power of God. Even now, in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Father. Lord, we thank you again. Somebody say to me, shifting. Shift happens. So we see in this text that this mountain did not stand a chance according to the principles that Jesus is speaking to us here. So I want you to be able to grasp what mountains you may need to speak to and expect for God to move or shift, that is to replace or rearrange things that are blocking your path, whether that's in your health, wealth, finances, relationships, spirit, mind, body, and soul. I believe that God will do just what we see him do in this text right here. Hallelujah. I believe that God wants to do what we see in this text in the life of every believer. Hallelujah. So may God continue to bless and prosper you as you follow along with us this week. Again, we're talking about divine shifting and we're going to look at a working definition for divine shift as if you are familiar with our ministry and uh, you know that God always wants us to get understanding because with all of our getting, we need to get understanding. And so today is no exception. If you'd like to take notes, we're going to give you a working definition that you can use as you think about this week's message, shift happens. So here's a working definition for shift. To put something else aside and replace it by another or others to change or exchange something. So in the text that we read today, we see that Jesus says you can speak to this mountain and that mountain is representative 
for things that are hindering us or things that may be blocking our path, things that may be causing us to be denied access or granted the privileges that God has intended for each of us to enjoy. So when you look at this particular text of scripture, you can believe and you can trust that God still has given us the power today to speak to our mountains and we can command that they be shifted or replaced, uh, put aside, uh, change or be exchanged for what it is God has for my life. So in place of your sickness, disease, or illness, God give me health, restoration, and vitality in my body. I speak to my body. I speak to viruses. I speak to bacteria. I speak to veins and arteries. Shift and be replaced by smooth flowing capillaries in my body so that you can function at your optimum health. That's just one example. Same, same thing can happen with in your financial life. If you're burdened with debt or like, you can speak to your mountain of debt. You can speak to your mountain of like. As Jesus said, if you say to this mountain, hallelujah, realize, saints, he wasn't talking about a geographic or, or a topical uh, natural feature. The mountain in this text that we read today is symbolic or representative of things that seem impossible, things that seem so large and unmovable in our lives. Jesus wants us to know that they are movable because of the divine shifts that can happen when you speak and declare things in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Someone said to me, shift happens. Yes, shift happens, saints of God, when we speak to our mountains and we command that they be moved and cast into yonder sea. The Holy Spirit has been, 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 been speaking and ministering to me deeply for this upcoming year of 2022. He often gives me a message or a thought that will use as a foundation for, for, for ministry and mission in the next calendar year. And uh, I think I mentioned in previous broadcasts that God doesn't always, he's not limited to our limited thinking. For God's ways is above our ways, his thoughts are above our thoughts. So even though we, we matter, we reach out and we try to grasp things in our own understanding, we must allow God to stretch us, to stretch our understanding, to stretch our faith to show us new horizons or the depths of new dimensions of the things in God. So Father, I thank you now for your divine privilege to examine this text at a fresh new light today. And, and I speak over every person who's listening that they will have a fresh new understanding and, and grasp the implications and the application of this word in their life today. Again, Mark eleven twenty three New International Version says, truly, I tell you, if anyone, that means that every person under the sound and hearing of my voice, the scripture is a, a, applicable to you. If you do not doubt in your heart and if you believe that what you say will happen, it will be done for you. These are the words of Jesus to those who have placed their faith in the almighty power of God. Those who trust that God is omnipotent, that is all powerful. That means he has all power to do all things at all times in all places simultaneously. And we want to give God praise for that even now. Somebody say hallelujah. So Father, we thank you now for, for how you're moving and how you're uh, uh, ministering to us by your spirit and I really want you to go deeply 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 into the hearts and minds of every listener today so 2022 the Lord is speaking this word about shift happens 2022 of course as I mentioned to you earlier God is not limited to our timetables or or to our thinking for some of you your shift has already begun for some your shift is beginning and for us others, it will begin. But I want you to know shift happens when we do not doubt in our hearts. When we believe that what we say will happen, it will be done because 
of the divine power of God to shift and remove and to replace and to rearrange, to change things in our lives. Somebody give God praise. So Father, we thank you. Thank you for what you've already revealed to us and what you're going to reveal to us going forward beyond this message as we go throughout our days, go throughout our weeks or months and years of our life. May this message forever be embedded in us. That and may it come quickly to our remembrance, to the forefront of our thoughts as we face trying and difficult situations or circumstances, as we minister to others who may be facing uh, their difficulties in their lives, that we may put our faith and trust in you, that when we speak, that we will believe and that we will receive whatever it is we speak. If a mountain needs to be moved, we speak mountains move. Sickness needs to be moved, we see sickness move. As one of the New Testament text is scripture talks about Peter's mother-in-law being sick. And it says that Peter rebuked the fever. In other words, he commanded that the fever be removed or shift because he realized that the sickness or illness, or in this particular case, the fever could not persist where faith is. I hope you grab that, children of God. Same thing with the widow in Zarephath when the prophet Elijah spoke to her about gathering empty pots and using the little oil and meal that she had and make him a cake first and, and then ask her to pour a the empty vow what appeared to be empty, saints of God. Some of your situations may seem to be dead, may seem to be buried and empty, or, or, or there's no circumstance of it even being supplied or resurrected back. I want you to know today that when, when divine shift happens in your life, things change. Things get rearranged. God causes things to, 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 to be removed and replaced by something else. How many of you can grab a hold of this right now today in the name of Jesus? How many of you right now today uh, will, will, will begin to ask God to help you to speak things and remove the doubt in your mind? And, and I, want, I don't want you to feel ashamed or feel as if you are any less than any other person because uh, it, it's easy, it's almost natural to doubt things that we have never seen happen before. But that's where faith gets in for God's faith is the substance of things that we hope for. Faith is the evidence of things that we cannot see right now. And that's why we say it even though we don't see it. Hallelujah. We say it until we see it because we're going to walk by faith and not by sight expecting shift to happen. Someone said to me, shift happens. Hallelujah. So let's look at this in context. Look at some of the text that we can read prior, prior to this particular declaration or word of instruction from Jesus. And we can begin to see how we can also begin or continue to, in some cases, place our complete hope, trust, and faith in God, gain the confidence to speak to our circumstances, to speak to our situations, to speak over life matters in other people's lives and that we can we can believe without doubting that we will receive whatever it is we ask for. The scripture in Mark says, and it shall be done shift in the name of Jesus. I say to sickness shift. I say to lack shift. I say to confusion shift. Be removed and cast away from your lives, from our lives in the name of Jesus. So we look at this chapter again, Mark chapter 11, let's begin reading at verse number one. Let's, let's try to put the scripture in context so that we can gain the understanding that we need to have for this week's lesson. Here we are, verse one, it says, as they approached Jerusalem and came to a city called Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples saying, go to them, go ahead to the village of, ahead of you and just as you enter it, you will find a coat tied there, which no one has ever written. 
He says, untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you doing this? Say the Lord needs it and will send it back here shortly. So even in this student of God, we can see that God says things that have never been done before will begin to happen in your lives when you begin to do that which you have never done before. I want you to get that to them, God. Things, new things begin to happen in your life when you do things that you have never done before. In other words, new things happen when you begin to new, do new things and speak new things, believe new things, and act according to those things. Shift happens. Jesus says, then you will find a coat there that which no one has ever written. Untie it and bring it here. And if anyone asks you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord needs it and we'll send it back shortly. Verse 4, they went and found a coat outside in the street, tied at a doorway. And as they untied it, some people standing there asked, what are you doing untying that coat? Just as Jesus said they would do. Don't you know the Lord knows what opposition don't, don't you know the Lord knows what things may cause fear and doubt to permeate in your mind, but he speaks it in advance to these disciples and perhaps by the power of the Holy Spirit, he's speaking in advance to someone right now that when you begin to act upon the word of God, there will be people, there will be situations, there will be circumstances that will try to hinder you, to question you in order to create fear and doubt in your mind. But Jesus says, Act upon my word. Believe it. Do not doubt what I have spoken to you. And it shall be done just as you have said. So verse 6, they answered as Jesus had told them to. And the people let them go. Come on, saints of God, do you get this? So if, we, if they had allowed fear and doubt, they would have just uh, been paralyzed by that fear. They would not have acted upon the words that Jesus had given them. And that's why I want you to, if you're experiencing fear or doubt right now, I want you to press past doubt. I want you to shift into a new lane, into the passing lane. So called doubt is slowing you down. It is in the slow lane, trying to keep you from reaching your destiny and purpose. Even right now, I want you to shift into a different lane, saints of God. I want you to pass doubt. And, and then once you pass doubt, you may encounter a, a traffic or or, or 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 a blockage in the road called fear and i want you to be shift shift lanes again and bypass fear so that you can receive all that god has in store for you all that god has determined in your life all that god wants to do all that god desires to do all that god is prepared to do for you because shift happens so again, in verse six, they answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the coat to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed. Verse 10, blessed is the coming kingdom of our father, David, Hosanna in the highest heavens. Verse 11, Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple courts. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the 12. Here we are, verse 12. The next day, as they were leaving Bethany, Jesus was hungry. And seeing in a distance a fig tree in leaf, he went to find if it had any fruit. When he reached it, he found nothing but leaves because it was not the season for figs. Then he said, come on, son, somebody tell me, then he said. Then he being Jesus said, this is another example of what our foundational text is trying to get into our spirit, saints of God that our words matter, that words have power. We are created in the very image of God, just as God said, let us make man, just as God said, let there be light, and it was so. And here we see in Jesus, another example of the power of spoken word, of, spoke, of words that are spoken without doubt, without fear, 
without reservation, with an expectation that whatever we say will happen or be done. Again, we take a look at this text again, where it says, Jesus encountered this fig tree, saints of God. And Jesus said, once he saw it, didn't have any fruit, he said to the tree, verse 14, may no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard him say it. Somebody said, they heard him say it. So what are you saying to situations that at once look promising, but end up to be a dead end for you? What are you saying or what are you going to begin to say to, 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 to your own self when you allow others to manipulate and mislead you? What are you going to begin saying, saints of God? Because if you don't say anything different, you will not receive anything different. But if you begin to speak different, you begin to believe different, you begin to act different, and you begin to receive different. Because shift happens when we speak without doubt, believing that we shall receive whatever we ask of God. Someone say shift happens. So Jesus said to the tree, may no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard it. Upon reaching Jerusalem, verse 15, Jesus entered the temple courts and began driving out those who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. And he would not allow anyone to carry merchandise through the temple courts. And as he taught them, he said, someone said, he said, he said, it is written, my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you have made it a den of thieves. You notice Jesus didn't just stop in the natural realm of shifting things. He began to shift things in the spiritual or religious realm. He knew that this system of belief, religion, or philosophy or worship had to be replaced with something new, so he had to uproot and undo that was what's in place, and so he commanded that it not exist, just as that tree would never produce fruit again, neither would his father's house be used for merchandise. Oh, somebody say shift. Shift happens when we speak without doubting, telling mountains, in this case, religious hypocrisy to be removed. Jesus was cleansing the temple that day. What things need to be cleansed out of your life, children of God? What about on your job or in your home, in your church, in your ministry, in your mind, in your body, in your relationships? What things need to be cleansed, children of God? What things that, that you have been allowing that God says you should no longer allow these things in your life? It's time for you to speak and declare a cleansing, a shifting in your relationships, in your job, in your marriage. Hallelujah. In your business, in the name of Jesus. Verse 18, let's read. The chief priests and the teachers of the law heard this and began looking for a way to kill him. For they feared him because the whole crowd was amazed at his teaching. When evening came, Jesus and his disciples went out of the city. Verse 20, in the morning as they went along, they saw the fig tree. Someone said they saw it. First, Jesus said it. Come on, saints. Back up to our scriptures before they went into Bethany. Jesus had spoke to this fig tree. He had spoke certain words about what would happen to this fig tree. But at that time, he said it. They did not see it. I want you to know, saints, sometimes you may not see it immediately. But if God said it, it's settled. Now we see the full circle taking place here in verse 20 about what God said. Now it says in this text, in the morning when they went along, they saw. I want you to see what you say, thanks to God. If you speak to a mountain and you say that it should be removed, I want you to see that mountain moved in the name of Jesus. Somebody says shift happens. Yes, that shift happens when we speak to our mountains without doubt, believing that whatever we ask for shall be done. Here we see again, they saw the fig tree and it was withered from its roots. In other words, it would never, no man would ever eat fruit from it again because Jesus had said it and now they see it 
and it is so. I want you to hold on and grasp the same principle for your life, children of God. These are the principles. This is one principle and example that Jesus displayed for us about what happens when we exercise faith by saying things. We will begin to see things. We will say shift and shift will happen. We will say heal and healing will happen. We will say provide and provision will come. We will say peace and peace will come forth in the name of Jesus. Whatever it is, children of God, I want you to begin to say it. And I also want you to see it because that's what happened when shift happens. I want you to be full of sh a shifting power, saints of God. I want you to be full of the power that can speak for shifting, the rearranging, the removing, the replacing, and the bringing forth of that which need to exist in your life and the casting out of that which does not. Shift happens, children of God. So verse 22, Jesus' response to the saints when they saw this fig tree withered. Let's get it again, verse 20. In the morning, as they went along, they saw the fig tree withered from its roots. And Peter remembered and said to Jesus, Rabbi, look. I say to you, saints of God, look at what used to be blocking your path. And since you've said it, it is removed. I say to you, look at the results of your word is what Peter is saying. Rabbi, look, the fig tree that you cursed or that you spoke over has withered. And then Jesus says to Peter, just as the Holy Spirit is saying to each of you today, have faith in God. That's what Jesus answered the disciples in response to Peter's declaration or exclamation. So to God, I want you to grab a hold of the same, very same thing. The disciples did not understand the power of God's word at that time, of the power of spoken words. They had never seen it happen before. So that's why I mentioned to you, it's natural or understandable if you may have a little seed of doubt right now. But our, Jesus wants to remove all doubt out of your mind. And this scripture may provide the spark, just the spark that you need in order to starve your doubts, in order to feed your faith. Again, Peter remembered what Jesus said. He says, look, the fig tree you curse is with it. Jesus said in response, have faith in God. Verse 23, truly, our, which is our foundational text, our foundational text brings us right full circle to understand why the power of our words is so important to God. If you were to hold on to what Jesus said to Peter and the disciples in verse 22, you will be ready to receive what our foundational text wants us to receive in verse 23. So here is the foundational text again now in light of what we've read in the scriptures. It says, truly I tell you, I'm talking to you children of God. I'm talking to each and every one of you under the sound and the hearing of my voice right now. I say to you, if any of you say to your mountains, go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in your heart, but believe what you say will happen, it will happen for you. Shift happens. Father, I thank you now in the name of Jesus. I thank you for your power. I thank you for your wisdom. I thank you for your strength. I thank you for your glory and your majesty. Hallelujah. We thank you now, Father, that you have all power. You have given us power of the spoken word. You have given us faith to speak to our mountains that they be removed, replaced, changed, and, 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 and cast away from us in the name of Jesus. You also given us power to bring forth those things that need to be in our lives by the power of that same spoken word to replace every obstacle with with things that will transition us into the destiny and the purpose of God in our lives. Remove every sickness and disease and illness and spirit of infirmity and replace it with wholeness, strength and vitality right now in the name of Jesus. Everything that causes lack or resembles lack or poverty in our lives, we speak now that it be moved 
away from us and replaced with the wealth and riches and favor of God. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for every, any sin that's in our atmospheric realm, that the power of sin be broken now in the name of Jesus and the power of salvation and deliverance will come. Oh, Lord, we thank you. We praise you. We exalt you. We, we believe in the power of divine shifting. We believe that shift does happen and shift will happen in our lives. So we forever give you all the honor. We forever give you all the praise and the glory because we believe and we receive things because we speak them without doubt and shift will happen. Hallelujah and amen.